Hello everyone, this is Bob and Threadbear, and welcome to Bioshock Infinite. Now perhaps you're wondering why I'm starting with Infinite and skipping over Bioshocks 1 and 2. Well, the reason is fairly simple. It's because Bioshock Infinite touches upon a wide variety of topics, wider than its predecessors, including topics of history, philosophy, science, and literature. And as such, I believe it makes a decent follow-up to Deus Ex, regardless of your opinions on the game itself. You know, actually, I just finished this on medium, and I actually kind of breezed through it, so I figure I'll give heart a shot. See if that works out for me. Oh, well, that's a nice little banner, isn't it? Unfortunately, there's a little matter of time involved. Oh, yay. Golden weapons. Booker, are you afraid of God? No. But I'm afraid of you. You know, it's not many games who start with a quote from an in-game character. Are you going to just sit there? As compared to what? Standing? Not standing. Rowing. Rowing? Haven't planned on it. So you expect me to shoulder What's the this? burden? No. I do expect you to do all the rowing. And why is that? Coming here was your idea. My idea? I've made it very clear that I don't believe in the exercise. The rowing? No. Imagine that's wonderful exercise. Then what? The entire thought experiment. Excuse me. How much longer? One goes into an experiment knowing one could fail. But one does not undertake an experiment knowing one has failed. Can we get back to the rowing? I suggest you do, no, but we're never going to get there. No, I mean I'd greatly appreciate it if you would assist. Perhaps you should ask him. I imagine he has a greater interest in getting there than I do. I suppose he does, but there's no point in asking. Why not? Because he doesn't row. He doesn't row? No, he doesn't row. Ah, I see what you mean. We've arrived. He's not moving! He will, eventually. I suppose he does. Well, we don't really get much of a choice here. Shall we tell him when we'll be returning? Would that change anything? might give him some comfort. At least that's something we can agree on. Hey! Is somebody meeting me here? I'd certainly hope so. It does seem like a dreadful place to be stranded. Well, maybe there's someone inside. Man, they're really booking it. I wonder if those are lures or something. I'm not quite sure what they're for. Colorful, though. get raindrops on the camera lens. I've already been a little confused about that effect. I mean, why have the drops act like they're landing on a camera lens when you're supposed to be, you know, first-person perspective? I mean, it's kind of pointing out the fact that you are not looking through a pair of eyes, now isn't it? Excuse me! It's Booker DeWitt. I guess you're expecting me? 
How did he pound on the door when it was unlatched? Good luck with that, pal. You know, I can remember doing stitch work like that back in home economics. That was back in middle school. Something else that's always amused me about the uh, Bioshock games. Is anyone here? Hello? It's how they apparently have bottomless stomachs. The protagonists, I mean. It's good when I am dying. It's good when I am dying. Hmm. It's good when I am dying. It's Looks like some sort of train schedule. Why they don't go into the northwest, though? Well, that's interesting. Looks like someone must have thrown this table down the staircase. Look like there's anything else of note on this floor, though. Hmm. Oh dear. Shit. Wonder what they did to that guy. Wonder who he is. What's interesting? Well, just as soon as I grab a few more silver eagles here. You can actually see Maine from up here. It's a nice little touch. Wait a minute, that card. It's nice of them to hold it up for you like that. What notes that's supposed to be playing? sit in their fancy chair. Might as well. <laughs> so now... <clears throat> what the hell? <clears throat> Go! Make yourself ready, Pilgrim. The bind beams are there as a safeguard. No, no, God damn it! Ascension in the count of five. No, count of four. No, no, no. Three. Two. One. Ascension. Ascension. Five thousand feet. Ten thousand feet. Fifteen thousand feet. Hallelujah.
Okay, but really now, why do they move the seat so that you're facing down for a second there? There's really no point to that except for losing your gun. Presumably being based on a parachute, that was remarkably good aim. My feet go. The word of the prophet. No Bibles present, but plenty of those books. The Seed of the Prophet. Interesting. That this church is flooded up to what looks like the ankles. I mean, baptism is a very important part of Christianity. Gotta find the exit out of this place. Hang on. Talking happening. Wrong button. Love the prophet because he loves the sinner. Love the sinner because he is you. Without the sinner, what need is there for a redeemer? Without sin, what grace has forgiveness? Excuse me, where am I? Heaven, friend. Or as close as we'll see till judgment day. I just keep such questions to myself, unless I want to get made. So, as I was saying, baptism is an important part of Christianity, and an important part of Comstock's life as well, as we will eventually see. But I don't believe I've ever heard of having a church which is just in general flooded to the ankles. By the way, that one paint, that one uh, stained glass window there has an important detail, which is that it's got the halo of sainthood around Comstock's wife, but not around Comstock. And there's one around his daughter as well.
Looks like there's nothing more to rob from the church around here. So let's head down the stairs. And you know, I'm not Catholic, but I believe the candles are lights of remembrance. Like you light one for each person you want to remember. But like I said, I'm not Catholic. I could be mistaken about that. And either way, Comstock is definitely not Catholic, so who knows. And every year on this day of days, we recommit ourselves to our city and to our prophet, Father Comstock. We recommit through sacrifice and the giving of thanks and by submerging ourselves in the sweet waters of baptism. And lo, if the prophet has struck down our enemies at night, and not hey, reflections beneath us, it would have been enough. If the prophet had just railed against the Sodom beneath us, but not accepted the three golden gifts of the founders, it would have been enough. If the prophet had just accepted the three golden gifts of the founders and not prayed for our deliverance, it would have been enough. If the prophet had only prayed for our deliverance and not led us to this new Eden, it would have been enough. If the prophet had just led us to the new Eden and not purged the vipers of the Orient, it would have been enough if the prophet had just purged the vipers of the Orient, but not suffered the sacrifice of his beloved. It would have been enough if the prophet had just suffered the sacrifice of his beloved, but not expelled the Vox Populi. It would have been enough. Well then. Is it someone new? Someone from the sodden below, newly come to Columbia to be washed clean before our prophet, our founders, and our lord. I just need passage into the city. Passage to the city. Brother, the only way to Columbia is through rebirth in the sweet waters of baptism. Will you be cleansed, brother? Let's either this or turn around and get back on that Lord rocket. Might as well get it over with. Come and be cleansed. Hallelujah! <laughs> hey. I baptize you in the name of our prophet, in the name of our founders, and the name of our Lord. <laughs> in the of I don't know, brothers and sisters. But this one doesn't look clean to me. That priest was blind. Who's there? Who's there? Bring us the curb and wipe away the debt! What do you want? We have a deal to it. Open this door right now. I told you. I'm not gonna do it. Go away. Mr. DeWitt! Mr. DeWitt! Sounds like there's a baby in there. Investigations into matters both public and private. That's not a hallway. That's not a hallway at all. <laughs> that idiot priest needs to learn the difference between baptizing a man and drowning one. I need to find a landmark and figure out where the hell I am. To Father Franklin, a key of gold so that Eden might have industry that set her above all other nations. To Father Jefferson, a scroll, 
so that Eden might have laws that set her above all other nations. And so each year we recommit ourselves to our founders and our prophet, Father Comstock. And, and recommit to, to our, our prophet, prophet, Father, Father Comstock. Comstock, so that we may follow in the prophet's path. Amen. Amen. Seems rather excessively Greek for being people from the 18th century. Our prophet fills our lungs with water, so they may better love the air. Your prophet sounds like a right bastard. Oh. Hummingbirds. Interesting. Oh, that's the same on the other side. He who crossed the Delaware with flaming sword and wings of angels. Watch over me and lend me strength. Shield my mind from fear and doubt so that I may hold fast against all invaders. Father Washington, hear my prayer. Pretty sure the Founding Fathers did not want to be prayed to. A rebel against ignorance and tyranny. Share with me your wisdom and let the light of your good judgment shine like a beacon through the darkness. Father Jefferson, hear my prayer. By the sword, and, and the, the scroll, scroll and, and the, the key. key. Amen. Gonna steal some fountain coins here. Chance, no luck, only providence. And that you see its divine hand at work, you discern the transmundane. Your inspiration and imagination transcend mere science and open our eyes to the mystery. Father Franklin, hear my prayer. Well, just because the city flies don't mean it ain't got its fair share of fools. All right, so got a girl to find. Sounds like there's something crazy happening beyond that door. Guess we better go find out what it is. Well, that's mildly disorienting. don't dock on time. Yesterday I had to take a gondola, rubbing elbows with all sorts. Morning. Good to see you. Probably shouldn't take his stuff. I mean, he's standing right there. Perfect day for the celebration. Father Comstock must have foreseen and planned it just this way. Well, that and you're kind of above the rain clouds. It generally helps. Kid. That statue. I just think it fails to capture Father Comstock's absolute, you know, divinity. Hmm? Like does not matter to a Liberty Scout. There's no room for preference, only duty. You say so. Some stalls all right, I tell you. Says he's for faith, family, and fatherland. Who could be against all that? Sounds like they're talking about a politician. Never hire an 
artist, my dear fellow. They are a temperamental and unreliable lot to a man. Uh-huh. I told him that the park is exceedingly far behind schedule. The, the, the landscaping is half finished. The, the statuary hasn't arrived. The fountain is full of rainwater, for God's sake. Even the marigolds are still unplanted. All work which should have been done months ago. Uh-huh. Do you know what he told me? He said that he was tired, that, that the work had taken much from him. I said, good God, man, don't tell me about details, just get it done. Mm-hmm. You almost finished down there? Yes, sir. Everybody's got complaints. I wish subtitles didn't also subtitle the title cards. Seems a bit unnecessary. The subtitle is just above our profit there. Come on, guys. Then, the Archangel showed a vision. A city, lighter than air. I asked her, why do you show this to me, Archangel? I'm not a strong man. I'm not a righteous man. I am not a holy man. And she told me the most remarkable thing. You're right, Prophet. But if grace is within the grasp of one such as you, how can anyone else not see it in themselves? Now, what does Vox Popular even mean, for heaven's sake? Uh, it's Latin. It means... Latin. <laughs> it means the people's voice. You know, I thought I detected a hint of an accent from our waiter. Hmm. I knew they had a little more to say. They've got ice cream. Too bad it's closed. Anything in the corner here? It doesn't look like it. I wonder where Columbia drains to. I suppose it's the surface, but that must be rather uncomfortable, depending on where you live underneath it. To the victory you wounded me, the angel Columbia did present herself to Father Comstock and show him a vision of the future. And so our prophet led the people away from the Sodom below. Uh, Picking the right event to attend on a day like today is serious business, you know. You can't be everywhere at once. You'll always miss something. That's why we're going to the raffle. I have a good feeling this year. I wonder what they're giving away at the raffle. Columbia Raffle and Fair. Huh. Ooh. Grassy. There's a lot of weight to suspend in midair, isn't it? He's strong in the sword, but a bit weak in the key and the scroll, if you get my meaning. Gotta love searching all the trash cans, huh? Who is this girl? Columbia. And now, back to the music. 
Honor system, eh? No, I just can't take the Silver Eagles. Bastards. Making me self-aware of how I steal everything that isn't nailed down. Let's get out of here. Got a bad feeling about that store. Making me think about stealing everything. You need a devil figure. If you should ever leave me, no life would still go on. Believe me, the world could show nothing to me. So Would you care for a boutonniere? We're raising money for the girls' patriotic league. <laughs> Maybe next time. You'd look dashing with one in your lapel. Come back if you change your mind. Certainly got plenty to spare. But this is a day of celebration after all. Damn it. Got caught on the umbrella. Very beautiful city. I have to say. Interesting note, God Only Knows is a Beach Boys song from the 1960s. One man goes into the waters of baptism, a different man comes out, born again. But who is that man who lies submerged? Perhaps that swimmer is both sinner and saint, until he is revealed unto the eyes of man. It's worth noting, though, that, in case you weren't aware of it, the anachronism of God Only Knows is intentional, and does come up later. That kind of talk draws attention. Oh, don't turn into some faint and radical on me, John. I do not want to be some character out of I Married a Vox Popular, now do I? those kids doing? Whatever. There's Monument Island. We'll be there shortly, I imagine. But in any case... Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to History Corner. Now, for a while, I considered using this time to describe the deviations in Bioshock Infinite, which led to the creation of the flying city of Columbia, but... I'd say the game does a decent enough job of explaining its own alternate history. So instead, what I would like to do is describe to you the condition of the United States of America in 1912. The Long Shadow of the Civil War. The American Civil War is quite easily the most traumatic event in our country's history. More Americans died in the Civil War than in any other 
in part because Americans fought on both sides. The war reshaped state economies, reshaped the national government, reshaped society itself. And we are to this day suffering from the lingering effects of this war. You can imagine then how prominent it was less than 50 years after the Civil War's end. The first period following the Civil War is known as the Reconstruction, which lasted around 12 years from 1865 to 1877. After the Confederacy's defeat, radical Northern Republicans poured into the South to invest in new industries and infrastructure, and to ensure that the newly freed slaves would be given the chance to vote, and to obtain property and an education. And for a while, the reforms worked. Despite the violence of hate groups like the KKK, African Americans owned farms, got elected into state and federal legislations, and started building schools and colleges. Unfortunately, this period did not last forever. The southern plantation owners didn't die during the Civil War, and they didn't lose power afterwards. And so it was only a matter of waiting for the northern Republicans to grow tired of keeping up the fight, so that they could then reassert the hierarchy that kept them in charge of the oppressive agrarian southern economy. The Reconstruction ended on a national level with the 1877 Compromise, the result of a fiercely contested presidential election, which saw Republican Rutherford B. Hayes become president, but only on the condition that he removed federal troops from all southern states, and therefore allow the Southern Democrats to resume their control. After that came the Southern Redemption, a sort of reconciliation between North and South which recast the Civil War as a sort of romantic tragedy, perhaps best seen in films like The Birth of a Nation and Gone with the Wind. And in order to effect this reconciliation, black people were thrown under the bus, with Jim Crow laws to segregate and prevent black people from voting, and with the exploitative practice of sharecropping, which was essentially like old-fashioned European serfdom, except the sharecroppers weren't literally tied to the land. It wouldn't be until a hundred years after the Civil War ended that black Americans would finally be able to start asserting their political rights again, and it would take the mechanization of the cotton industry to get enough black Americans to migrate to the cities and get organized. Meanwhile, the northern and western United States were receiving an excessive number of immigrants from Europe and China. This immigration was driving up competition for jobs, creating a cheap and easily exploited labor market which was, in significant part, responsible for the rise of monopolies and robber barons in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Political pressure from unions, trade organizations, and racists brought about legislation aimed at limiting immigration, starting with the Chinese in 1875, but it would take until the 1920s for hard caps and quotas to be placed on immigration. The March of Technology The roots of the Industrial Revolution lie in the mechanization of the textile industry that followed England's glorious revolution in 1688. The most important innovation was not the steam engine or electricity or punch card programming, but rather the concept of intellectual property. The idea that you can invent something, publish your invention, and then make money off of it, encourage people to create inventions and therefore make a profit because their rights were protected, despite what mechanization did to eliminate entire industries and job markets. Technological development has steadily accelerated over the past 300 years, but perhaps the greatest period of scientific optimism was during the late 19th and early 20th centuries. After all, much like always, scientific achievement had never before been greater, while at the same time, this was the last period to occur before World War I, in which it was shown quite plainly what technology could do to increase the horror of war machine guns, chemical weapons, airplane bombs and reconnaissance, and by the end, tanks. A lot of major advancements happened during this time. The first practical light bulb was invented in 1879, and the first effective movie camera in 1891. 
The most famous of the world's fairs happened at this time, such as the Great Exhibition of 1851, which defined England's Victorian era. The Centennial Exhibition of 1876, which showed off a post-war America and presented American products to international consumers. And the 1889 World's Fair in Paris, for which the Eiffel Tower was built. Of particular note is the 1893 World's Fair in Chicago, which defined American exceptionalism and our preference for excess. It also provided electrical exhibits, the first Ferris wheel, the first Midway, and the first sales of Cracker Jacks, Quaker Oats, and Aunt Jemima pancake mix. Also, at least in Bioshock Infinite's world, the Columbian Exposition is where the flying city of Columbia was first unveiled. Theoretical science also made great strides at this time. Starting in 1905, Albert Einstein published his most influential papers on general and special relativity, along with other topics. And these papers brought about massive changes to our understanding of mass and energy, space and time. And when Einstein's theories were combined with Mary Curie's research into radioactivity and Max Planck's equations, the field of quantum physics was born. There's a lot more to say about quantum theory, and in fact, there's a lot more that's relevant to Bioshock Infinite, but that will have to wait for its own corner. Personal Thoughts I want the history corners of this lecture series to make you angry. I want them to make you upset that such terrible things were ever allowed to happen. I want you to be angry and upset because terrible things continue to happen if to a lesser extent. And if we forget to consider these things unacceptable, if we ignore them and leave them be, then they will get worse. Tolerance and equality are not inevitable destinations. They are the impossible platonic ideals at the end of an endless road. And to travel this road, we must struggle against the very human desires for conformity, predictability, and undeserved privilege. Throughout this lecture series, I'm going to spend a lot of history corners describing the issues and struggles of various minorities in the United States. I will do my best to remain as objective as I can on these subjects, but oppression is simultaneously an impersonal product of society and an intensely personal experience. And as such, I believe I owe it to you all to explain exactly where it is that I, personally, am coming from. I am a straight, white man of above-average intelligence who is entirely satisfied with being all of those things. I grew up a part of a middle-class family in what's either a large town or a small city, depending on who you ask, and my ancestry is a very American blend of European nations. I'm one quarter Italian, and that's the most I am of anything. Apparently I'm also one sixteenth Native American, but that's never had an impact on my life. I don't even know what tribe or what part of the country my great-great-grandparent was from. As far as religion goes, I was essentially raised agnostic, and given the opportunity to either find or not find religion, although I've basically stuck with agnosticism. I am free of all physical and mental disabilities, aside from being left-handed, but that hasn't meant anything in over 50 years. I am a very shy person, enough that I got sent to special socializing classes back in elementary school, but it's never been so bad that I ever needed medication or professional help. I've been poor, I am poor. But so far, at least, I've managed to avoid any sort of crippling debt beyond my ability to repay. In short, I am about as unoppressed as any American citizen can be without being a part of the establishment. Still, I know what oppression looks like. My sister is bisexual and married to a woman. My best friend is Irish-American and his parents are Catholic. And while those two things don't mean much today, a hundred years ago they were a really big deal. His parents were also career members of the U.S. Navy, at least until they hit the mandatory retirement age. One of my friends back in high school was born deaf, and 
one of my roommates in college had a learning disability. In my last job, I worked alongside a lot of Somali and South Sudanese immigrants. And it's always struck me as interesting that, despite how poorly the United States can treat black people, Muslims, immigrants, and the poor, and these people are all four of these things, nevertheless, they thought it was a better idea to come here and deal with that than to deal with the warfare and starvation plaguing their homelands. Oh, and one last thing before we go. Bioshock Infinite is an extremely American game. And as such, the corners for this game are going to be very focused on American history and experiences. Oppression and suffering are far from being uniquely American. There are parts of the world that are perhaps better off than us, and parts that are far, far worse. And in some cases, it's actively our fault. Still, there are places for world history and for the history of other nations, but this place is for the United States of America. So I'll have to beg your forgiveness if I come off as single-minded at times. Thanks for joining me in History Corner, and I hope I'll see you soon.